Yeah. And you touched a little bit on self-love and some of your pieces even say that. And, Mm -hmm. you know, my question is around art. I would feel like it's somewhat fragile in that it's open to judgment from other people. Like, even if I do like a PowerPoint, I'm like, Ooh, are they going to like the design that I did or whatever? It's somewhat fragile. Do you ever get that feeling about your art or have you gotten better at that over time about letting people see your artwork and, you know, having it be open to scrutiny and judgment? In any- yeah. I mean, I've definitely had, I mean, there are definitely pieces that people absolutely love and then there have been pieces that people just don't get or they don't understand or it makes them uncomfortable. I recently did a portrait actually of Ellen DeGeneres and Portia de Rossi and they I did it for Pride Month last year Mm -hmm. and um and it's a it's a beautiful portrait of them but they're just like embracing each other and they're smiling and they look like they're about to go in for a kiss. So it was all about um because my art is, it's about love and it's about inclusivity, inclus, oh my gosh, inclus, thank you. I don't know why I just can't say that word right now. Um, and, and so I'm trying to embody and embrace that. And I just find that there's such amazing role models that have helped pave the way for so many people. And so I wanted to create this piece, this iconic piece. Um, obviously I wanted to pitch it to Ellen as well. <laughs> um, not a bad plan. <laughs> no, not a bad plan at all. And um, oh, that piece just made a lot of people uncomfortable. They didn't, I don't know. It just didn't go, yep, yep. There were people that absolutely loved it. And then there were a lot of people that felt uncomfortable with it as well. So it's just, uh, but that's the thing is, but to be an artist, I think there's a, there almost has to be an element of, you don't want to appeal to everybody. You're right, right. Because then, like, what makes you so... You know, there almost has to be some kind of controversy or something to drum up emotions with people. And I feel like those are the ones that you see are the most successful. Is that, is that no, some- that, yeah, I always say you haven't made it until you have haters. And usually when I start to get negative comments, then I'm like, ah, I've made it. <laughs> That's it. That's absolutely right. That's absolutely right. So once you start getting the trolls and the negative comments, then, and you know, my mom actually was the first one to remind me of that because once I started putting myself out there onto yeah. YouTube, um, especially, so Business Insider at one point, uh, this was like my first viral video I had. Business Insider had posted um, like this montage of me creating and what I do and just a bunch of my pieces. And because it didn't come because this YouTube uh, video didn't come from me, it was put out to the world from another source and a very large platform. So therefore it received just like oodles and oodles and oodles of comments. Don't and because, read the comments. <laughs> what's that? Don't read the comments. <laughs> oh yes, and I did. And I, that, that was one point, going back to your question of did you ever want to throw in the towel, it was due to that that I wanted to throw in the towel because the comments were so awful. They were so awful and so mean. And and then I was like, it started making me question, oh my gosh, is what I'm doing disgusting? Or oh my gosh, is what I'm doing completely weird? Or oh my gosh, is what I'm doing like totally projecting sex? Or is what, I mean, just the com- the comments and like the things that people came up with were so ridiculous. But, you know, my mom said the exact, what you just said, she's like, Lex, you've got haters, honey. That means that you're doing something right. So <laughs> yeah, that's unbelievable though. Cause you, I look at your work and it's like, I wouldn't even think of any of those things. So that's on them. That's not you. That exactly. That's just my mom, as my mom likes to call them, they're honey, they're just losers behind a laptop. Okay. <laughs> Well, and I also like to tell myself, like, I can't put too much stake in the positive comments either because then I'm going to put a lot of stake in the negative comments. So I have to do it because it's genuine for me and it feels good for me and it's something that I'm passionate about, which yeah. is that same impression from you. So, Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so you also have a nonprofit that you recently formed, Kisses for a Cause. Yeah. Thanks for asking about that. Um, I it, we, we just started it. So... I have donated just tens of thousands of dollars through my art to charities throughout the years, charities that I believe in, um, or I've taken the funds from what I've earned and I put it towards other foundations that I believe in. So, and my sister actually, so she's, you know, a huge, um, 
she, she works with nonprofits all the time. And she's like, Lex, you need to have a nonprofit. And I said, I don't even understand how a nonprofit really works. <laughs> so she said, I'll help you get it set up. And she, you know, taught me all the ins and outs of the nonprofit. And again, this just kind of goes into the whole play of like, you don't have to know how something works. Just take the first step and you'll figure it out as you go. Right. <laughs> so she set up my nonprofit, helped me get my nonprofit set up. So yes, it's called kisses for a cause. Um, and the whole idea behind it is to be able to, um, to be able to embrace other local artists and to be able to give back through my work my work that all embodies the idea of love and care and be able to deliver that to the world. So um, right now we're working on a special project. We're trying to work with this whole COVID case right now and we're trying to put out community kits for the public. So we're trying to, um, we're creating these kits that are geared towards low income families and Right now, as a mother of two children, I can only imagine what it must be like, especially as a single mom right now, who all of a sudden is out of work, has no income, her kids are home, she needs to homeschool, and she doesn't have any money to diaper her child because, you know, the crazies before her just bought 20 packs of diapers at a time. You know, so it's just, um, it's got to be a really difficult situation for a lot of people right now. So right now we're working on a project um, to raise money for these low income families. Uh, we're actually partnering with Feeding Tampa Bay and uh, we're basically just trying to build this thing. But just like any business, this is a nonprofit that's brand spanking new. So it's about getting the word out there and trying to you know, it's, it's again, hearing a lot of rejections, you know, because to be able to do something like this, you need money to fund it. And yeah especially right now, I mean, so many banks and companies and individuals are putting forth money towards mega giant charities right now, you know, and I'm not the Red Cross, right? So, you know, it's just trying to unleash this new nonprofit and let people know what it's about and what I want to do with it. And, you know, hopefully do something impactful. But over the course of time, I definitely want to, um, just continue to bring awareness back to Kisses for a Cause, um, get donations where I can because I want to be able to put that towards, you know, causes that I believe in and, you know, try and put my own spin on them too. So. And I think you're in it for the long game and, you know, it's going to take time to build yeah. that up. You could do that yeah. with your business. So can you talk a little bit about your beautiful gallery that you're in? And Yeah. So my gallery was, um, this was a, truly a dream. I um, have dreamt of having my own gallery. You know what I mean? Like I said, I came from my studio space in Toronto was eight feet by eight feet, you know? And so it's like now I have 2,600 square feet here to play with. And it's just incredible. I mean, it was truly a dream. It was something that I've worked the better part of my adulthood towards. And um, what's great about my galleries, it's not just a place for me to create my art and for me to display and sell my art. Um, but ultimately, our goal for this place, and now it's, you know, obviously all being put on hold right now, but it's not just a gallery, it's an event space as well. And um, similar to what I'm trying to do with my nonprofit, I want to help um, support our local artisans. And what we want to do is we want to bring in local talent. So not just visual artists, but our main goal is like, let's bring in local musicians and let's bring in local comics and let's bring in local you know, let's do slam poetry. Let's have dueling piano bar nights. Like, let's make this place a fun, warm, inviting place that people want to be because I have been in so many art galleries that are stuffy and they're cold and they're intimidating. And yeah. I don't even, I, I'll like peer in the windows and once the salesperson sees me, I run away kind of thing. Ooh. Like, that is not what I want to have here. I want to have a gallery that, you know, the door is open, the music is on and people are here. And so we're trying to, it, I, the, the little slogan that's actually on my door, it says not your ordinary gal gallery or your ordinary artist. So it's like, I am not an ordinary artist. I do not want to have an ordinary gallery. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So that's the intention for the gallery. Um, it was definitely quite a, I don't know. It was definitely quite a punch in the gut, I guess, yeah. when my gallery launch was actually the very weekend that our nation was told to quarantine. So it was a lot of work and build up and, you know, 
poured a lot into the opening of this gallery and then it never even really got to happen. So, um, you know, all that's just going to have to be put on hold. And in the meantime, I'm just trying to reinvent what I'm doing a little bit to make sure that, you know, all of this can stay afloat. And so it's been taking, it's taken a lot of inner work and thinking outside the box and getting extra creative. You know, if I can't sell my art traditionally right now as a mode to keep all this afloat, then what else can I do? So yeah. Yeah. Been I know that it will come back at some point. It's just, is it two months from now or is it six months from now? Right. Yeah. Right. And so what can we expect next from you then? Yeah. I mean, right now it's all about keeping, it's all about expanding my brand. So my brand isn't just going to be about art. So art is going to be a part of it, but I have plans to, it's, I mean, I have big plans of things that I want to do that involve my nonprofit. So you're going to see stuff come from that. I have plans to do, I, I have plans to do like these little art kits, um, these makeup kits. I have plans to do, write a children's book to, um, I have a few different things that I have in the works right now. I don't necessarily want to reveal all of them just yet, but it's, uh, I have, I have a lot of different ideas of ways that I can utilize my brand lipstick Lex and what lipstick Lex means. Like what does my brand encapsulate? Well, it encapsulates love and self love and beauty and personal empowerment and positivity and just feel good vibes all around. So basically taking all of those elements and putting that all taking that all those elements and this brand and like, what can I turn that into besides just fine art? Right. And, um, so I'm working on a few side projects and we'll see how it all unravels, but, um, very yeah. exciting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Brand, and I know some people think it's frou-frou, but the positivity works. I'm telling you. People need positivity, it you know, in yeah. in the people. That, go ahead. No, no go ahead. And the people that want it are the ones that seek it. And that's your vibe attracts your tribe, as yeah. I always say. So yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. it's easy to get into that kind of woe is me, things are happening to me. But it's once you flip out of that, it's so much better mindset to be in that positive. Yeah. 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 Exactly. And so if people want to engage with you, what's the best way to do it? Obviously Instagram, but Yeah, well yeah, for sure. I'm all about the Insta. Yeah. <laughs> I actually just joined TikTok, which I'm still trying to oh, figure out. Oh gosh. Out. I'm like, oh, I know. I, I don't know if I should I have a fourteen year old daughter, so she's like, Yeah, you should, but she can coach you. I wish I had a fourteen year old daughter to coach me. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, but yes, yeah, so people can reach me obviously on Instagram. Uh, you can write me a DM there um, or reach out to me in my comments. But uh, my email, um, it's lex at lipsticklex.com. Uh, if people want to check me out on my website, that's lipsticklex.com. And uh, yeah, those are my, those are my main. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Well, thank you so much for being here. I could talk to you all day, but I appreciate you being here. Yeah, no, it was my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me on. And hopefully this gives some insight to somebody else out there. So <laughs> no, we are normally talking to business folks. So I love kind of the departure and the more creative artistic side. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. It just goes to show that creatives can be business savvy too. Yeah, yeah. Figure it out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Everything is figure outable. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you.